Good afternoon and welcome to Wingate University. I am Kenny Potter. I'm chair of the music department here as well as composer of the show uh, that you're about to see. Now, um, I do, uh, we put this in a program, but I want to underscore uh, a couple of things. Um, one is you're playing a very important role because this, this show has been going around in my head uh, uh, for roughly a four years. Um, and uh, I reached out to the cast and to the musicians and said, okay, it's time, let's see if we can put this together so that we have an idea on what to, what to, where to go from here. And so the, that process is called a workshop. And so you're seeing the product of workshopping this musical show. It's kind of like a rough draft of a novel, all right? Uh, so we will finish this and um, uh, then go back, make changes, and then uh, likely uh, at some point, it could be a couple years down the road or a few months or I'm not sure, uh, We'll, we'll try it again. Um, uh, that's the way most shows are put together, uh, multiple workshops, and uh, eventually when uh, um, the creators are, are, are happy with it, then uh, comes the premiere. We invite you to imagine sets, to imagine costumes, uh, to imagine uh, a full staging. Uh, everything is going is is uh, uh, going to be less than what a premiere would be. Uh, so we're inviting you to be active participants to use your imaginations. Um, and I also want to note uh, there's plenty of room. Um, and uh, so, and if you do want to social distance, uh, you have plenty of space to social distance. Uh, all of the um, uh, eligible cast members have are fully vaccinated, so they will be singing without masks. Um, I believe that is all, and so uh, this has been an ins uh, inspiring journey. Uh, um, learning more about this amazing man that history unfortunately uh, has mostly forgotten and we hope that that will change beginning today and so without further ado here is the workshop performance of robert smalls the musical
the shadow of the mansion in the shade of the trees because they live in town far from the plantation he doesn't recognize the slaves as the situation foreign slave persons they live fairly well at least until the evening curfew bell when whites can freely roam while slaves head to their homes robert doesn't understand the cause of his
in the fields. Yes, I came in the fields. I brought the boy to no hard work. I don't want to see him being spoiled. He is certainly growing in strength. I could certainly use another hand if you think he is ready. Oh, uh -huh.
I travel throughout this land, bringing good news that God has a plan for all of us. Tonight, God is telling me to preach on the story of the Exodus, the story of Moses, who was saved from Satan and grew up in the house of Pharaoh himself. When he became a man, Moses saw how his people were treated as When Israel was in Egypt's land, so hard they could not stand. Yes. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh to let my people go.
Yes, ma'am. If you want to see me again, I'll be at church in the morning, right around the corner. So long. A woman like her would make me want to be a good man. Correction. She will make me want to be a bad man. <laughs> Come on, Robert. I want to find a woman just like her. I know just the place. Now, nah, y'all go ahead. I'll catch up with you. Suit yourself. Come on, fellas. See you later, Robert. <sighs> One day, somehow, I, we, will all be free. The chains of a man's bondage can encase his hands, but they cannot imprison his heart. His feet may be fettered, but the shackles can touch his will. While his mouth may be silenced, his mind can sing out loud. All my life I have longed for a life I can call my own. All my life I have longed for a place where
legality and the morality of the ownership of slaves. For these difficult matters, we should always seek the guidance of God in the Word. For example, Ephesians 6, 5 says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. In the book Philemon, mm -hmm. our brother Paul pleads his case for a slave. In verse 15, he says, Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while mm -hmm. was that you might have him back forever. Mm -hmm. No longer as a slave, but yes. better than a slave. Yes. Yes. As a dear brother. Yes. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. Yes. And in Peter's first chapter, letter 2, verse 18, Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are hard to a good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. And in Galatians 3 and 28, Paul states that there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Yes. In Colossians 3, 22, Paul states, Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it, not only when their eyes on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Throughout the scriptures, God always rescues his people out yes, of bondage. Yes, yes. From Hebrew slaves in Egypt to the shackles of Babylon, yes. his people always gained their freedom. Yes. And, and we all look forward to the day that we see the pearly gates of heaven, our heavenly reward that is described in John's vision in Revelation 7 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Oh, what a beautiful city! Oh, what a beautiful city! Oh, what a beautiful city! Twelve gates into the city, hallelujah. Oh, what a beautiful city. Oh, what a beautiful city. Oh, what a beautiful city. Twelve gates into the city.
small. Freedom, love, take your pick. I pick both. Me too, and I will experience both one day. So. I know it, I have always been told that I'm meant for something greater. I know in my heart that I will find love and I will one day taste freedom. You are a dreamer. What about you? Do you have dreams? Of course, we all do. It's just that some of us are more realistic than others. What do you mean? Do you think that we will be free? But even if we're free, then what? What do you mean? Would we be able to work, make a living? Would we get respect? What would it look like? At first, it might be hard, but over time, we can dream. The second act will begin at 3.45. Thank you very much.
keep your family intact.
continue to live like this. If the rumors are true, then our days together are numbered. If Charleston is invaded, then the Kingsmen will take you and the children away. And I can't imagine living without you. Well, what are we gonna do? What if I bought you and the children freedom? Then at least we could be always together. They would never agree to that. But it's worth asking. I still get a dollar a week. I've got a hundred dollars saved up. Robert, it's going to cost way more than that. It's still worth asking. I don't want to live anymore. Wondering if we're spending our last night together. When are you going to ask them? Tomorrow morning. Why don't you cook them a special breakfast? They're my purpose, they're my life. 
purchase some of our property. And what might you be able to offer us, Rob? Well, well, I've saved up one hundred dollars. One hundred dollars. One hundred dollars. Why, that might get you little, Robert. Would you want to purchase little Robert's freedom? No, sir. I want to purchase the freedom of Hannah, Lizzie, and little Robert. All three? For one hundred dollars, you're asking me to give them away. Now, Robert, you know better than anyone. They are good and useful property. Hannah's one of my most valuable slaves. And Lizzie's going to be a mighty fine helper in the house one day. Oh, and that little Robert, if he grows up healthily, is strong, and is productive like you, well then, these are great investments. Well then, well then how much do you want? Hmm. Tell you what, Robert. I'll sell their freedom for eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars? Eight hundred dollars? Eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars? Eight hundred dollars? Eight hundred dollars, that's my one and only offer. And after you consider it, Robert, you may excuse yourself from my front porch. Margaret, dear, I do believe it's time for church. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Eight hundred dollars that would take years, and if they move, I'll be left with only tears. Eight hundred dollars, an impossible cost. However, without it, my family may be lost. However, without it, my family.
supposedly get our boat. How are we supposed to get past Castle Pinckney, Fort Johnson, Fort Moultrie, and Fort, Fort Sumter. Sumter? That's the easy part. The hard part is figuring out once we're past the forts, how to keep the northern ships from sinking us. Let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. You want to steal a large gunboat from a secure dock in Charleston, driving in several miles of water that is full of mines, right? Past four forts, then drive our boat to the Northern Blockade, whose mission is to sink any and every Confederate ship that comes in and out of Charleston. Did I miss anything? No. What do you think? You know, first off, I want whatever you've been drinking. <laughs> Come in. Wait, 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 wait. We can't do it alone. Me. What I am proposing is a treasonous crime And punishment will lead to certain death They'll take your life and your very last breath We have got an advantage they think we're unlearned And in addition their trust we burn By our hard work and always aiming to please By the time they know their duty will be on the scene And leaves the plateau with no one else around but us young slaves who wouldn't dare to try to make an escape for fear that we die. Between all of us, we can easily set sail and traverse the harbor. I know every detail, including the batteries and the dangerous mines. And as for the forts, I know the signs. Wouldn't do us any harm, and we'll all. 
Keep in your own beds. Or maybe someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> we ship off at 0700. Hi, yes, sir. Robert, y'all finish up securing the plant. I'm going to see the missus. I suggest you do the same. See you in the morning. Yes, sir, Captain. We'll finish up here and be on our way. You have a good night. John, what do you think the food tastes like in a free country? Sweeter than honey. That's what I'm thinking. Ready, everyone? Here comes Fort Moultrie. What are you going to do once we're free? <clears throat> I'm 
gonna shake Abe Lincoln's hand. Here comes Fort Sumter. You never notice how many cannons it has. Hello, everyone. Guns, hold your fire. 
steady your aim and be ready. We will pull beside the vessel and prepare to board. life 
worth living. This is the kind of man we need fighting this wretched war. A brilliant segue, Mr. President. Mr. Smalls here is proof enough that Negroes should be able to fight in battles. The U.S. military could use more men. I understand that. But I am concerned with the border states siding against the Union if we allow Negroes in the military. With all due respect, Mr. President, Negroes are perfectly capable of serving the Union's cause from the front lines. I understand that, Frederick. But if the front lines move farther north, then we stand the risk of losing valuable resources and potentially the war. Mr. Smalls, do you have any thoughts on this matter? Mr. President, my race needs no special defense. Past histories of them in this country proves them to be as capable as any people anywhere. All they need is an equal chance in the battle of life. I can assure you that if you could have seen my men under the certain promise of death if we were caught, you would have seen men as brave as any soldier under fire. Hear, hear. Very well. I will take this into much consideration. Mr. Smalls, please share with us your plans for your newly earned freedom.
enjoy the reception that's out in the rotunda. Thank you very much.